I feel like I would be like a 70s guy, like a disco guy. Uh, the best era, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Thank for you. men. Guys, we were on to something. We were on to something <laughs> in the 70s. <laughs> hey. we, need, we need to run that back. <laughs> literally we need to run the run tapes away. back some things need to stay in the past some things need to come back <laughs> the porn stash i'm cool in it manic pixie jump scare hosted by quinn murphy and becca hobart hi <gasps> Hi. We're Quinn. We're Quinn. And we're Becca. And we're Becca. And, and, and welcome to Manic Pixie Jump Scare, a podcast where Becca and I talk openly about our shared delusions, passions, and, and, and love, love for, for each, e- other. each other. Uh. I truly don't know what that what that was. Like that whole voice yeah. moment. Um my goal was like if I was like in like liver failure or something, yeah, definitely. Yeah, mine was just like I just got it in my head to go like hi, and then I didn't know how exactly that translated to the other words we say in the intro. But um, right, yeah, that's just something I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's personal. Yeah. It's personal. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> here you are. Another week. Another um, week. So one thing to address off the bat, Beck and I were just talking about this, but I will rehash it for the audience. Um, mm-hmm. It is 3.45 a.m. where I am because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. something so quirky and interesting about Europe is that they actually do daylight savings a week earlier than the United States. And so... Yeah like the fallback or whatever the fuck um Mm -hmm. happened on sunday and it doesn't happen until next sunday in the states so for a week instead of being like six hours ahead of where becca is in the u.s i'm five Mm -hmm. hours ahead and so yeah but yeah quinn Quinn has is truly serving like a soldier to this podcast now yeah for, this um for all 10 of you <laughs> like the commitment it's off the charts there are more than 10 but well. <laughs> <laughs> no no sorry not sorry. much more but <laughs> <laughs> you're um, right 15 <laughs> yeah those girls um <laughs> but yeah becca how the hell mm-hmm. are you oh What's you been know going on? <laughs> so Basically, this week, what has been the main, I guess you could say, event or happening is that I have been violently on my period. Oh, my goodness. And I know, Quinn, that you have not experienced a period. I have not yet. I'm hoping too soon. Yet. Yes. Not to date. But (laughs) the future is bright and long. And <laughs> who's to say? Who's to say? Um, but basically, imagine having the worst tummy ache of your life. OMG, mm, oh, my tummy hurts so already, bad. So already, I'm out. <laughs> like, already, I'm out, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Already, I'm out on the whole experience. I am. Uh, we've talked about my immune system on the podcast before. It's um, unreal. Yeah. And I think my mm-hmm. stomach, I also have a very strong stomach. Mm -hmm. like I don't feel any tummy aches very often but when I do oh I'm it's earth shattering debilitated actually like (laughs) it's the worst Mm -hmm. it's the worst it's it yeah so it's a horrible thing for a person to go through yeah and then also imagine feeling like everyone hates you oh and then also like You have to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Oh, my God. Like, and the the emotional term, like, it's just crazy. I have just, the hormones have been insane this time. I would say I get a period this bad, like, once a year. And 
It's the time of the year, baby. It's not even the time of the month. No. Time of the year. It's the time yeah. of the damn year. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it all comes to this. Wait, does it always come in like, does it always come like around this time or is it like? Mine really cycles like a lot, but no matter mm. what, and I swear, I swear I'm not lying about this. Every Christmas, I get it on mm. Christmas Day. So whatever happens during the year, it goes back and forth, whatever. I always end up getting it on Christmas. Oh, oh my God. Santa's gift to me. <laughs> having a uterus. Crazy. <laughs> um, He's coming down all types of chimneys. Seem, having a uterus does not seem like a gift. No, I want it out so bad. <laughs> Like, I am begging people to give me hysterectomies. I'm flying to countries. I'm flying to where you are, Quinn. I'm begging for a hysterectomy. <laughs> Italia. Yeah, Italia. Um, it's just terrible. It's but, terrible, your honor. Yeah, so I've just been trying to distract myself with, you know, funny videos, blah, 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 wasting my time on the screen. Um, but also... Something I've been wondering lately, because every once in a while, I do wonder who ever won those Danimals giveaways. <laughs> this has been internet you know? discourse lately. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've seen and I have seriously wondered that because I remember my mom like begging my mom to buy me those red yogurts. Crush cups. So that, <laughs> so that I could meet someone from high school musical and i remember her being like it would probably just be that one backup dancer it wouldn't even be like the main people and so it's like hey either way they were in high school musical it's fine yeah my proximity to fame would be greater yeah five degrees away Mm -hmm. um but now i'm wondering since i don't know if you know what omaze is but it's like a charity charity site where you can win like sweepstakes money trips meetings with celebrities oh what yeah it's basically grown-up animals instead of yogurt though you just have to donate to like a foundation at the moment okay work yeah no it's like very slay but the photos of the winners they post are very clearly headshotted photos Uh this is a huge website though some of the prizes have been like meeting (laughs) Quinn 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 one of them was to have coffee with Chris Evans (gasps) tell me how I didn't win that That why did I not win that that would be crazy for you it it just wasn't meant to be at that time I have to believe no no you're not meant to meet him (laughs) not yet not yet you're not meant to meet him (laughs) as a part of like a sweepstakes where like a commoner could meet him Thank you so much. You're yeah, meant you're to right. meet him on his level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just got chills. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so let it be. Um, but I have to, I have to know. Guys, write in if you have ever won an Omaze prize. Every month they give away $100,000. Oh, my God. Yeah. Where do people get this money? Exactly. It's like that. Um, I've never watched. Deal or no deal. Oh yeah. Um, a woman bought a house. Well, that that makes more sense because like, um, deal or no deal it's is definitely a TV like show. corporate sponsorship, and that's how they like. Well, sure. Get the money. Same with like game shows, but like, I'm talking about um, like that Mr. Beast person on YouTube who's always giving away like money. Well, yeah, I mean, he's a seriously famous YouTuber as well. So, like, I've watched like, one of his videos one of time, but I'm like, how do you, where do you just get $100,000 to give to someone? Yeah. I mean, hey, David, <laughs> Dav- David, da- whoa, 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 guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> David Dobrik was giving away Teslas like they were <laughs> baby bars of chocolate on halloween night a soft pretzel yeah yeah (laughs) exactly with mustard um it was crazy it's like where are you guys getting all of this Mm -hmm. like it's it's insane i guess how much companies pay youtubers for ads i guess 
Yeah, especially like, especially in the upper echelon, like it's crazy to think how much money people can start to make. Like it's hard to like wrap your head around it. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's one of those things where like the vast majority of creators are not making that amount of money but yeah. like the people who are it's like it's it's insane like you can't imagine it almost exactly mm-hmm. it's a little spooky also to think about like the dumbest people you know making <laughs> the most money you've ever heard of the people who are just willing who are dumb enough to like physically hurt themselves and put it on the internet <laughs> yeah <laughs> are the Paul people brothers oh yeah like... are the people who are gonna like you know are the new titans of industry <laughs> or people who will just lie about everything trisha Paytas, i'm looking at you i do love you but i don't even think she's <laughs> one of those people who has like an insane amount of money if that makes sense i mean compared to other I mean, for people what she, for what she does yeah for what she does and she has a mansion and a baby whoa whoa too expensive things <laughs> really expensive things she had a pink g-wagon that was crazy that was such a crazy period and i did see myself in her no i i think we need to get into the fact that like brands are just pushing certain things on us like we all remember the baking craze of 2012 and like how that seemingly how like everybody thought bacon was like a new thing oh yeah right yeah 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 and it's like i've been eating my bacon my whole damn life why is everybody suddenly talking about it (laughs) come to find out that was actually fueled by there was like a big bacon bacon surplus yeah oh my dear god there's a bacon surplus and they had to move more of it so they like manufactured that did this did the mustache injury injury (laughs) fuck (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> guys it's 11 p.m for me it's really late really I'm late taylor for becca. Swift. <laughs> i'm taylor swift it's really late she's about um, to have those thoughts <laughs> i'm about to write those 13 songs but the mustache industry i think they would have had something to do with whatever happened in 2013 then i am fully convinced that aperol is the same kind of thing because what even is Aperol, by the way? It's some kind of liqueur. Okay. I think it's like, or like a bitter, but it's, I don't, I want to say it's orange or maybe grapefruit or something like that, but it's like, I will say, I think Aperol spritzes have like always been a thing in Europe. Okay. And now it made its way over the States, but it felt like this summer overnight, like, Everyone one was night, drinking that. Like one day, the Aperol spritz did not exist. The mm-hmm. next day, everyone had one in their hand. Mm, and I think it's because of Below Deck. Do they drink them on there? They do. They love espresso martinis in the Mediterranean season. They love Aperol spritzes. Yeah, so I think it's an. I think it's. I think it's more of a thing here in Europe. But I don't. I don't know what caused the whole craze in the states. But it came on way too fast to just be an organic thing right um and so i'm watching people and i had one in the states and i was like oh this is actually disgusting i actually Ugh. tasted one here the other day and it's much better as cocktails usually are here yep um yep. and so a gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. oh oh a gin and tonic is like a whole other experience here it's fabulous mm-hmm. oh my god and it's oh also god. like four dollars yeah <laughs> i'll take 12 (laughs) it's perfect (laughs) no for real um (laughs) no for real though but yeah yeah i also um what's another thing i i feel like i had another thing i theorize anyway um but guys stay woke um to what corporations are trying to Mm -hmm. push upon you um yes most certainly it's scary the trend cycle (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway um, but yeah but yeah that's what's going on with me quinn but literally yeah so you've been in italy so what even the frick is happening there um you know italy is at least beautiful we like mm-hmm. we've been making our way throughout the whole or not the whole country but like some different parts of the country so we started in um i keep forgetting and the last two times i've talked about it, i forget the name but um Naples, Napoli, and then um, yeah. we kind of explored around there. 
and like that's kind of near the Amalfi Coast. Like one day we went like up the Amalfi Coast to some different towns, and then um, we went to Rome for a couple days. Whoa. Um, yeah, uh, and Rome was super cool, guys. Okay, also. I'm not one for organized religion, as we all talked in our in our record breaking episode, Mister Bananas. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not like a big like organized religion girly at this point in my life, but baby, something about the Vatican, like, did she serve? No, I've been to the Vatican now twice. Like, I cannot imagine going to Rome without going to the Vatican. Like. I believe like whenever I go to Rome, I'll just go because it's honestly just Mm -hmm. like such a cool experience. Um, So you went to the smallest country in the world. I did. Vatican. It's like barely the Pope. No, luckily. Fuck. I have some things to say to her. Um, Well, yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Mostly (laughs) I would play a love game to him. I feel like he really needs to hear it. Love game. Let's play a love game. Play a love we'll play game. Play love game by Lady Gaga to him. <laughs> yeah, I would sing it. That was randomly one of the songs that I like really got my life to at the Chromatica Ball. Randomly, because Love Game I isn't like she... a song. It's not like a song in her she catalog. That I'm... Uh, no, it does deserve it. <laughs> Um, it's not like a song in her catalog I like go up for, but when if when it was mm. live for some reason I was like, <laughs> like I, was, I was going insane. And mm-hmm. um but yeah, the Vatican, there's just so much cool art there. Um mm. all this like historical stuff. And then like there was this whole before you get to the Sistine Chapel, there's this whole contemporary art section. And our mm. tour was such a serve because it was early in the morning. We literally well, we were supposed to meet at 7.30 to start the tour, like, in the morning. Okay, so they say, yeah. Yes. Um, but then my family and I ended up missing the meeting point, and then we had to get, like, escorted to our tour. It was, like, a whole mess. But anyway, so our <laughs> tour of, like, the Vatican started sometime around, like, 8.20 in the morning. Mm. And so if you've ever been to the Vatican, famously one of the most crowded places ever, but because we were there so early and because – It was like a Saturday when we went. I don't know if that helped or like was supposed to hurt, but our like, it was like empty basically, like relatively. Because like the last time, the last time I was like at the Vatican, um, it was like so crowded. Yeah, you can't get a word in edgewise. Oh yeah, um, but this time it was like there was there were times where we would be like in a room looking at the frescoes and we were like the only people in like a room. Like, just, wow. like, our tour group, which was insane. I'm sure that was peaceful in some ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, lovely. And we were, like, when we were in the Sistine Chapel, I, like, um, <laughs> I remember looking up this at the creation of Adam, like, the actual, like, because that's where the actual creation of Adam is. Um, mm-hmm. It's a part of, like, the huge fresco on the ceiling. And... I just started like I took I started tearing up. I was like so moved by it for some reason. Aww. <laughs> I was Aww. like, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and God went to him. <laughs> no, literally. I love it. Well. Um, <laughs> literally. <laughs> but yeah, so the Vatican. I love moments like that. No, it's one of those things like you just have to, in my view, you just have to do. You had to be there. You have to do. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, that was Rome. We did other things in Rome. And then um, we went to Venice. Um, mm-hmm. Which Venice is cool, but it was very, um, it was very like overcast the whole time we were there. So like it was never in the sunlight. Um, and so uh, I wasn't enchanted with it as I was okay. last time I was there. And then um, yeah. now we are in Verena, which is a town on Lake Como um Mm. in the north of italy um but yeah um also side note because it is the night time i have like two rooms of people sleeping on either side of me and so there's just some weird like noises coming (laughs) (laughs) 
Sounds good. There's some, <laughs> there's some weird noises going on. Um, <laughs> going on. But I want to talk to you about this, my friend, Becca. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And be open and honest with the listening public. But I had a moment this week mm-hmm. where I did not feel hot. Okay. And to me, already I'm scared. <laughs> but I do urge you to go on. Yeah, so I don't um I don't need to get into like the full circumstances around it, but like I had um it was triggered, it, it was weirdly triggered by a dream. <sighs> okay. I had okay. a dream one night and the con I woke up the next day and I was mm-hmm. like, I just felt like kind of like meh. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, why do I feel this way? And then I was like, oh, maybe it was because I had that dream last night. And then as I started to think about it more, I was just like, oh, oh, oh. Like this dream became like so indicative of like so many things going on in my life. And I had like a full day, like, like (laughs) sulk about it. Like I was just like, no, yeah. And then it, but, but it came, it like basically came down to like not feeling like good about myself not entirely but like not Mm -hmm. that I don't like and I'm feeling better now but like not that I like hate myself always but like Mm -hmm. it's just um do you find it in the same way that sometimes you have like moments where like you're feeling like kind of less good about yourself or like you know oh yeah absolutely are you talking about also like your appearance or like just you in general like mostly my appearance but also me in general yeah I know I have days where I'm like oh I am the ugliest girl that's ever lived but then I also have days where I'm like how could anyone the not drop to their lived. knees <laughs> while, while they're seeing me like I'm the hottest woman who's ever lived um yeah it's it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it and sucks. it was it, it, it. Oh my god, it was. It's just this whole thing. Because once you get in like a oh I'm not hot, it just starts to you just start to spiral from there. Really. Yeah, it can get scary for sure. Yeah, and I was just I was just yeah I was just completely like hmm, for like a day. Aww. Like I need I need I just need to like recollect for a second Aww. and like <laughs> journal and you know um, <laughs> journal about it for sure. Um, but yeah it is it it is like it, it's such a thing um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um and it was weird because it was all about it was about like like my physical appearance obviously and then mm-hmm. when I was journaling like it's hard sometimes when you know you're being irrational but you can't like help Stop yourself, yourself out like you can like re- acknowledge you're being irrational but it doesn't help like in that second because like I remember I was journaling and I was, like, writing down all the things that, like, I find, like, physically undesirable about myself. And it was, like, I wrote down, like, five things. And then I was, like, hmm. I'm really scraping the barrel for this. <laughs> 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 I had to be, like, to myself in my irrational state. Like, the the part of me that was being, like, rational was, like, okay, well, if you can only really write down five things. <laughs> Maybe you're you're good maybe you're good <laughs> but yeah. I was like just letting those five things rule me apparently um mm-hmm. and so I, th- and I just Quinn, find that the irrational part that's also what a period feels like per- oh wow yeah yeah maybe it was like my version of a period probably because it probably hit when mine hit so that would make sense maybe maybe <laughs> Maybe the gods wanted me to understand some of what you were going through. So they made us cycle sisters. Yeah. I'm so sorry for that. We synced up. <laughs> I can't I can't help but have have to think that it has something to do with me, but yeah. have the strongest uterus in town. <laughs> um, um yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear you're feeling that way, but you feel like journaling helped you and you're feeling better. Yeah. Now? Yeah, I feel okay. I feel a lot better now. But um yeah, it was just weird. I like I like I randomly felt like <laughs> some like the worst I can remember feeling like 
mm-hmm. in like a mental space mm-hmm. but just for like the span of like 24 hours it was like it was a really weird uh-huh. um not 24 hours maybe like 36 but um yeah it was just like a weird thing um do you so. feel like in those moments that external validation is something you seek and want or is it like where it's like no one would be able to tell me otherwise like I just think this about myself um more more the latter Mm -hmm. more like I'm just no I just don't want to hear from anybody really (laughs) yeah because like my whole my my inclination like in that moment was just to be like I just want to be alone (laughs) like right I'm yeah be ugly I get and alone. That. um <laughs> in my room yeah ugly buddy. um and so uh but yeah I do I do recognize that other people's inclinations to get attention in that moment mm-hmm. I also just something I've been realizing super recently is like that everybody's inclination is just just like get attention at all times um absolutely especially people our age I just find we're like just trying to find new ways to get people's attention um Mm -hmm. and so I feel like I'm a little bit more vigilant to be like okay well someone's attention won't immediately make me feel better um yeah so as Megan Thee Stallion once so famously said bad bitches have bad days too um um, but uh yeah so do you have any like do you have any kind of coping mechanisms if you don't feel hot yeah I usually (laughs) try and I think I used to really like really rely on like externally looking for that Uh like being like oh if someone were to tell me that I was pretty like oh that would fix everything but it really (laughs) actually doesn't Mm -hmm. it really doesn't long term because you're it's like oh it's always nice to hear that of course I love I love being complimented oh my god do it do it every day comment right now but um I feel like just yeah I think it's like trying to center yourself and like bring yourself back to rationality while also like it's okay to feel bad sometimes you're gonna feel those feelings so it's Mm -hmm. better like you kind of just have to push through it because it is like an inevitable thing that you're going to be dealing with that. Like everyone feels that way sometimes. Uh-huh. So just like pushing through it, trying to send to yourself and then going back to the, the rational part of you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, sucks that you have to like deal with it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes like, sometimes people just want to be left alone like if people want to be left alone sometimes like obviously there are like extreme circumstances where you like people have to interject but like if like you're like if you're like mostly happy friend is like having a bad day sometimes girl mm-hmm. just leave them alone for a sec <laughs> like it's okay so true. Yeah. i love being in my lonesome <laughs> yeah no and sometimes yeah. you just like, need it, feels it. So like, good sometimes. Sometimes. like even as somebody who's in, yeah. like as somebody who like I would definitely classify myself as an extrovert like sometimes I just Mm -hmm. need to like retreat and like rot yeah I've been calling it rotting lately like I just need to rot I love that you say that because it's true (laughs) no it's true I I, I also love to say I need to pretend I don't exist for a little while (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then by in my 10 foot by 10 foot room I can do that yeah I can escape reality Mm -hmm. for just it's such an easy thing to do um Mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah um but yeah, that was a conversation I wanted to bring to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I appreciate you for that. Thank you for sharing. What? And Quinn, to me, you are gorgeous. I know yeah. that. I don't know if that will help, but. Thank you. I'm just I'm just saying, saying my truth. You are Mecca, gorgeous. you're also very gorgeous to me. Thank you, Quinn. Okay. Then we're going to throw it to a little tiny little break. And then, in just a second, we'll be back to get into today's topic. Mm-hmm. Guys, I'm scared. Oh, my God. No. Okay. <laughs> Not giving Ana to Armas. <laughs> Me? was bit. i serving blonde <laughs> yeah you were a little bit <laughs> i still haven't seen the movie i don't think i want to yeah me neither it sounds the more yeah. i hear about it it's like terrible 
Yeah, it sounds horrible. A mm-hmm. podcast we're about to talk about did like a whole thing on it. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Um, okay. It was very amusing. That's funny. Well, yeah, that leads us to our topic today, guys. So, um, Quinn is a, would you call yourself a big fan of the Nympho Wars podcast? Yes. Not like okay. a, I haven't listened like listener. every, I haven't listened to every episode. Um, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nympho Wars is just like, <laughs> it's one of the it's like a crazy podcast to listen to because they're um so it's these two um uh not even like comedians they just happen to be really funny um mm-hmm, but they're these mm-hmm. two kind of like people who well, like performance artists have like drag backgrounds um mm-hmm. in new york city um macy rodman and theta hamill um and they're two trans women and they just have this podcast called nympho wars um and they've just they do a lot of like their podcast format changes a lot like they do a lot of like semi-scripted like improv episodes and there are some that are like they started doing this they were gone the the podcast was like gone for a little while for like two years during the pandemic it like didn't exist and they just came back and now they pretend they're on like terrestrial radio like that's the whole um and like they (laughs) project to like uh trucker country um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and yeah they've mm-hmm. been but um uh and also they have it's like one of the funniest podcasts you can listen to period like they're two of the funniest people ever um very entertaining but the the funny like the funniest thing they've ever done on the podcast is this thing called murder on the stupid bitch express okay. um and it's a spoof on murder on the orient express of course <laughs> but like they were really obsessed with like drama get in two or whatever it was where like okay yeah yeah the, whole bu- the, the drama James get in where there was like the bi sister and like the sugar bear and like yeah. basically like that's the whole like crux like everybody who is in drama get in two is like on a train <laughs> on the train murdering yes. and so they have to it it's honestly one of the funniest things you can listen to. <laughs> I like, I sent, I like sent it to my friend Cor. He and like he he like listened to it and he was like, "This is so fucking funny." Um, <laughs> but yeah, they also did um, these two episodes. It was funny going back and listening to it because it was like their attempt at earnestness. <laughs> like, just and doing, they're like, still so like ridiculous. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're, like even in the thing, they were like ridiculous just because it's who they mm-hmm. are. But like they're like this is just our attempt at earnestness this is like an actual <laughs> like episode of a podcast <laughs> as opposed to whatever we do every week. Um, and so in those two episodes, they did like a little interview moment with each other. Mm-hmm. Went like Diane Sawyer on each other, and so oh, yeah. I thought to do that with my friend Becca on this very show since its inception um and so mm-hmm. today we're going to take an opportunity to do that and Yay. so yeah this week we're going to have one interview and the next week we're going to have another interview um but with each other instead of with a guest um because honestly it's such a good idea we already have two of the most fascinating people on the podcast so why not utilize that yeah <laughs> you guys Char, are um, being resourceful but yeah All right oh my, my nose is like crazy well who wants to start do you have a strong opinion um, i guess i can start with my questions for you okay perfect miss becker lewis mm-hmm, let me mm-hmm. pull up my dossier of course so that is sitting on the interviewer's couch or the interviewee's couch. Yes, interviewees. The Good Morning America. Okay, this is this was actually one I came up with um, because I find this to be similar in a lot of ways. Um, yes, but I want to know to you, to you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> do you consider yourself like? different or like unique from everyone um like beyond (laughs) (laughs) we're off to a great start (laughs) no 
was just worded so <laughs> I don't even know. Like out of context, that would be really condescending. <laughs> I know you don't mean it that way, but that was so funny. Uh, Do you I find yourself to be that. unique? <laughs> unique? Um you know, but no, but in an earnest way, in a not like gotcha way, yeah. but like just no. in um, <laughs> Absolutely. But like I, I've just like like we talked. I feel like I talked about it on this podcast a couple of times before. But I've just always had a sense that I'm a little bit different. And I move about in the world differently than some other people, mm-hmm. and so I've always kind of had that sense about myself. And so I was wondering because I don't, I obviously don't like exist as you, so like I don't mm-hmm. feel it as much from you as I feel like. Or, or maybe I have an overflated sense of me projecting that onto the world, but like, mm. have you felt that? Like, do you feel that in your life? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. Um, and I also, I mean, one of my poor qualities about myself that I do catch myself in a lot is mm-hmm. a pattern of thinking of I am better than a lot of people. Mm. And not even like in a, like where I'm so secure in myself, but sometimes I like, it's just, I have a thought where I'm like, oh my God, so much smarter than them. (laughs) It's like, oh God, I don't know. (laughs) Shouldn't always be thinking that like that. I know I was chosen. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. Do you have any sense of like when that like came up? Like what has it always been like a thing or? Yeah, I guess to a certain extent. Um, I feel like in elementary school, I do have distinct memories of not super like fitting in so much and feeling Mm. like I definitely developed my humor then probably as a defense mechanism thing. Um, Yeah, interesting, right? Uh And then I was like, oh, okay. Like when I found out like people find me funny or whatever, I was like, oh my God, I have unlocked a level of myself Mm -hmm. and this will like this will be like you know I can I I always recognized it as a strength because it's like how I made my friends and then how I would start talking to other people and now it's like that's like social currency of oh my god elementary school it's like who you're hanging out on the playground with yeah I have it's funny you say that because I had a very I had a very similar I feel like I had a very similar thing in elementary school where it's like Mm -hmm. I realized like I felt I felt that same way that I didn't fit in and Mm -hmm. I like flipped a switch and then one day I realized I was like funny Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like I could make people laugh and that was kind of my way in and so I believe that's also why I'm like a jokes 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 like (laughs) modern day court jester Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, absolutely (laughs) uh, but yeah that's so that's interesting that we mm-hmm. relate in that way. Um, yeah. And so, wait, what was I about to, I was about to say something else, but um, yeah. Anyway, so wait, okay. So now that we're talking about, I'm glad you, I'm glad that was the answer. And I'm glad my, you bring it up. I'm <laughs> glad you brought it up because <laughs> my next question is, tell me about young Becca. <laughs> what was she all about? Okay, true. <laughs> What did she like to do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I definitely was a fabulous little girl, Uh but I was also kind of more simple. Um, I loved like dressing up and stuff like that. Um, I was so into fashion. I wanted to be a pop star. We Uh all know that. Um, career dad. I was, (laughs) yeah, yeah. I was super shy actually when I was Uh younger and when I first, I played a lot of sports and I was really scared of the ball always, actually. Uh. (laughs) I was one of those girls. Um, And it wasn't even like I was, like, non-athletic. I was just really scared of being Uh hurt. (laughs) Mm. Um, So it was, like, the – it was the physical, like, safety piece of it, you think? I think so. That's Mm. what I remember. Um, Because I was like, oh, I'm not going to – I also, I, it was probably also a confrontation thing because uh-huh. someone has to have that ball. Yeah, I, yeah, because that's, I thought like the responsibility also, I, I imagine could be like a scary thing. 
Well, yeah. Because like, if you have the ball, you're responsible for what's going on in the game. Mm -hmm. The power is in your hands, and that is stressful for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I was also I said I was also kind of simple. Like, even though I loved like clothes and everything, and like everything being sparkly, I did wear like alternating the same two sweatshirts for like a full grade level Mm -hmm. so that was kind of tough um we all know my parents got divorced when i was younger um when did your parents get divorced again i was in second grade okay i was eight i think um classic and then (laughs) (laughs) classic classic so then yeah because it then in it was the summer of second grade. So then because in third grade, I moved into the house I am in with now with my mom. Mm. Um, you came yeah, back to school. They're I... like, what happened this summer? And you're like, my parents got divorced, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's new with me. I feel like it was <laughs> happening so much. Oh, uh, yeah. During that time, especially. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Becca, yeah. Like, I feel like our, our people our age, like everybody was like. My parents are getting divorced. <laughs> yes. It's just and that's such, the age where it yeah. happens, like really. Yeah, literally, literally, literally. Um, I was in. I also. This is a fun fact. I was in daycare for so much of my life. Oh because really? Because both my parents worked. Yeah, because my mom was a teacher, but she would always stay late. Um, and then my dad worked like an hour and a half away. So. Oh. I wouldn't see my parents until like 7.30 at night anyway. Oh. Yeah. So I spent hours making friends at the daycare. I did have some good friends. Something about child Becca. The worst thing you could call her was a copycat or a wannabe. That like offended me so much. But if I saw such an individual. Had- yeah, so it really is my uniqueness. Does matter to me because uh-huh. I was like, never tell me I'm like another bitch. Never <laughs> that, do that because I know that's not true. <laughs> and I know it's you're false. Speaking, I know you're speaking in <laughs> falsehoods. She lied. It was all a lie. It was all a lie. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what else? I don't know. I think those are the main things about little me. That's interesting. Did you like imagine a lot? Oh yeah. I think I still imagine a lot. I'm a Pisces moon, Same. as you may recall. <laughs> I imagine things so much. I went on a walk this morning and I fully <laughs> fleshed out this movie idea I have. Mm-hmm. I was just imagining things. It's like crazy. That is, oh my God, that you're so smart for that because that is the mod. Like I'm always writing down ideas like in my phone and like that is, like, yeah. that's, that's the adult form of like walking around and like playing pretend almost. <laughs> no, yeah. Because like, I feel like as adults, we're, like, afraid to, like, physically, like, express our imagination mm-hmm. in the same way that, like, kids are, where they'll just, like, play. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas, like, adults, we feel like, okay, we need to, like, create something. And maybe it's just because we're, like, creatives and stuff, but it's, like, we feel mm-hmm. like we need to, like, create something out of our impulse to play a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Um, yes. I've, I was very imaginative. I mean, uh, <laughs> why am i stuttering all of a sudden how how you say how you say imaginative (laughs) imaginative um could it be imagining imagine a world like that (laughs) imagine there's no people (laughs) but yeah oh my god um did you still like well no it sounds like you had like your little it sounded like you had a lot of friends and stuff, but did you still have that urge to like, even at that age, did you still have that urge to kind of like be alone? Oh yeah. Um, I, my, more so when I was like out of daycare. Um, so like middle school and high school, like people would want to hang out with their friends on a school night. Never me. And I'm still kind of like that. Like the weekends are for hanging out and every night of the week is my, my time. (laughs) My time. It's me. My time. For me. (laughs) My time. (laughs) So yeah. Yeah. I feel that same way. Or not that same way, but like I got a little bit better with it in college, but um, 
I find that I prioritize social things like differently than some people sometimes and so maybe that's kind of a similar mm-hmm. thing do you feel like you do that to like because you need because you need that alone time probably mm. um because like you there's would, no reason because I'm pretty sure you've had this conversation but you would describe yourself as like an introvert yeah I think I'm like an outgoing and in- introvert like mm. I love being with people I'm not I don't find myself to be shy like anymore Mm -hmm. Um, I feel really comfortable talking to people. I love talking to people. I love meeting new people. I like doing extroverted things, but it's not where like that does run out after a while. And I do need Mm -hmm. like restorative time. And I feel like that is when I'm alone Uh or at least at home. I'm a can't soft (laughs) roll. Gotta protect your crab. You gotta, (laughs) gotta protect my space, my energy. (laughs) Literally. Yeah. Um, Okay, so mm-hmm. my next question, my next okay. like formalized question that I've written down. Okay. So you've talked about being on Tumblr in 2014 and, yeah. you know, the era beyond that, moving forward in time a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so now you're in middle school. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you engage with on Tumblr that now makes you laugh, embarrasses you, or just like amazes you that like you're like, oh, why was I like involved with that? <laughs> like... And can you describe that stuff to me? (laughs) Absolutely. Um, You know what? I meant to bring this up because actually one of the things I found on TikTok the other day scared the shit out of me. It was, and this is going to get scary. Ready? (laughs) Um, I was definitely in eating disorder Tumblr. Uh... (laughs) So it's not, it's funny to me in that like, it's like a, Mm -hmm it's like so wild and crazy that like a 14 year old had access to this like uh, glamorization of eating disorders but it's happening on tiktok because i saw this account came up on my for you page with like like skit like thin spell whatever oh and then in the bio was like current weight goal weight Oh Which is my like, god. No, it's bad. And also like age 15. Like, oh guys. Bro. Yeah. I did report the account because I was like, I ha- it's my duty. Yeah. <laughs> as, as someone who, who was lived, on Tumblr. As a girl who was in the trenches. <laughs> who lived through this. I got to. So yeah. Um, that was just in like an insane period of my life. Uh-huh. Um, like not good at all. It's one of the bad parts of Tumblr. Um, so so help me understand because I wasn't I I like missed the boat I like had a Tumblr but I never got into it okay um so like help me understand a little bit more like what was going on on like eating disorder Tumblr and like how mm-hmm. how when you say like glamorize like what was that whole process I think so like on Tumblr the main thing is like posting a photo and then the threads under it when you open because like your Tumblr page, you design it. It doesn't work like this anymore, I don't think. But you're on the app and then you have a link that's like tumblr.myusername.com. Once you click on a photo, you then see like the thread underneath of comments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So say it was like a photo of a girl with a thigh gap, right? Which was like very aestheticized at the time because of people's like the way it fit into like their Tumblr pages. Um, Every bitch wanted a thigh gap literally that was like the most important thing to me and (laughs) when I was 14 my mom had one (gasps) and I was like I'm going to publicly execute myself (laughs) in front of her forever changing the trajectory of her life but um I didn't and I urge you all to do the same forever ending (laughs) the trajectory of her life (laughs) 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 yeah so um what was I oh yeah but like all the threads beneath that would be like oh my god so obsessed like need to lose weight blah 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 and it was just very much that and like everyone being like like also what was the star size was like photos of like cucumbers and like (laughs) plates with like the smallest little rice wafer on them Uh, like yeah and also like the romantic 
Yeah. And it was also like, okay, um, everyone was like, I need a boyfriend. And there's still there's still this like weird idea that like to find love you have to be skinny. <laughs> mm. Which is mm-hmm. just like not it's not true, but it's what like everyone believed on Tumblr. Uh-huh. So yeah. That was yeah, like so that was bad. Yeah, and so did you like did you find in that time that you like that you wanted a certain body that you like didn't have or like you had had you'd had yeah. it like one time or like how did that all work because have you always because you're not like not to be like I don't want to say <laughs> I don't want to say anything like, <laughs> triggering, but you're not like no 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 I'm not a skinny person and I, no, I never not, have like, been a skinny yeah in the same way that I like you know neither Becca nor I are skinny people but I feel like yeah in in a way like we're you know, genetically, neither of us are meant to be like super yeah, skinny no, I've, people. I've always, yeah, I've never been skinny. Um, mm-hmm. I super did want to be. And like, I my weight has fluctuated a lot in my life. I'm actually at like, I used to be bigger than this. And then, but I also have like, I'm not the smallest I've been. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and I was the smallest I was had been in this like Tumblr phase, actually, mm. which is like even scarier because like, who knows? I still wasn't skinny, uh huh. but I was I just like was like average, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. Poor did age. your I feel like I know the answer, but did your parents like monitor what you were doing on social media at all or? No, not at mm, all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah, I always feel like conflicted because I'm like I'm never like like I I I I'm I'm always kind of grateful that my parents allowed me to do my own thing. Um mm-hmm. and like so but sometimes when I think about especially what I was doing on like social media and stuff and I never got like crazy or anything. So if my parents are listening, like I never got insane but like just like Mm -hmm. the fact that I was like fully talking to strangers and like like you know like doing all this stuff like or that like somebody can like you know because you're you're one of like a couple people that I know who was like on that whole side of tumblr and like you know yeah so um yeah it's like it it must be really hard to be like every every time I think about being a parent I'm like that must be really fucking hard like (laughs) <laughs> yeah sounds exhausting guys we hate we hate on those people but like <laughs> it looks horrid oh. like like it's like you <laughs> have to horror. think about all this like shit like mm-hmm. oh my god like, there's so much going on yeah yep. oh my goodness so anything else from like the tumblr era or was it mostly just like the um it was weird... a lot of that but also um i think i I don't remember if I talked about this, but Tumblr was super funny. I would mostly just look at like (laughs) the most popular posts. It was very like millennial humor looking back. Oh. Um, But a lot of it was like at the time, like it was serving like, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. (laughs) Like just things like that. Like, you know, those Uh phrases. It me. Ermigerd cinnamon bun yeah tyler oakley anything he said on tumblr i was like oh let me reblog that actually (laughs) um i wonder if i can find my my tumblr i feel like i've thought a few times recently about how tyler oakley did two seasons of the amazing race two seasons yeah oh I thought he was only on there once. And I think he was a finalist both times. Really? Good yeah. for him. He's wait, is it I always forget. Is the amazing wraith physical? Yes. Or mental? Oh. Okay. It's like the most he, physical. Well, he's definitely fit. So. No, but like the the first time they went on was like before he did like his whole little like transformation into a twonk. Oh, really? Yes. And then the second time he was giving like full twonk. Oh, okay, serve. Yeah. Oh, okay, slay. Never been to heaven. I did find my I did 
was able to log into my Tumblr. Oh my goodness. And my page's name is Si Je Pouva Voler. I think it means if I could fly, if I remember correctly. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Very millennial, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. Mm. The thing has changed, so I'm not exactly sure how to open my page, but I will definitely send you the link once I do find that. Okay, wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That'll be a nice insight. Okay. Then I guess my next kind of question journey is to kind Mm -hmm. of um, help me understand, like, how you became artistic in a way, because... Okay. I don't quote, I'm trying to connect the dots between like the little girl who's like playing sports but is afraid of the ball mm-hmm. <laughs> and how she yeah. becomes like a like really interesting artist um, mm-hmm. and kind of develops the sensibilities that come along with that. Um. Well, I think it was always like kind of a part of me. Like I did love... Mm-hmm. I always was into art classes also. Um, I didn't really do theater though until way later, like last year of high school, beginning of college type of stuff. But when I felt like, this is the best way I can describe it. Sometimes when I would be talking to like a big group of people, like in high school or like to a sports team you know that I was on I felt in a way like I was performing like I was like Uh some sort of like comedian or performer and so I think that's when I like started to tap into that and like found that I liked that in a weird way um but yeah I think that like art and like being imaginative is something also writing I've always like done creative writing um Mm -hmm. I think that's it's always been kind of a part of my life um so I think I just more so just focused on it way more Uh in college and stuff and Mm -hmm. when I decided to pursue it I was just taking it more seriously I guess so like I allowed myself to just do it then Mm -hmm. did you like did you what kind of like was there anything like stopped you from pursuing it more seriously in high school or like at an earlier stage of your life I was like embarrassed Mm -hmm. it's also like you know when you don't want to take something seriously because you're like what if it doesn't work out yes Mm -hmm. and then like it becomes worse yeah. So, like, I did fear that in a huge way. Also, uh-huh. I really cared when I was younger. I really cared about, like, being cool and being liked. Uh-huh. And the worst thing possible seemed, like, to start doing theater. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, that would suck. <laughs> and then I was yeah, like, screw you, that. Yeah, you, like, can't, you have to do theater, like, earnestly. <laughs> or, like, you have to, like, you have to, like, start at least, like, doing theater but, earnestly, yeah. I found, like. <laughs> You have to realize you're gonna annoy people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like be kind of <laughs> weird. To realize you're gonna be cringe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely I was, and like, I have friends from that did theater in high school, and like, I never found them too bad. <laughs> yeah. Some of them were annoying. Yeah, but some of them were like totally normal and fine. Uh-huh. But I think you. I think you. I think you hit on something so interesting about like before even that about being like about performing for other people. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I find I do that a lot and I, I find sometimes that I have a little bit of like a conflict between the self that is performative and the self that is more authentic. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason it comes up a lot with my family because like I feel like with my family I've been able to drop the facade a little bit where like I feel like I don't have to perform as much for them anymore 
Gotcha. But sometimes I feel like low energy around them. And it's not that I'm like low energy, but I think it's just that I'm like comfortable in a way or I don't feel the need to perform in the same way that I do in some other spaces. Yeah. And so do you, well, I guess, first of all, do you still feel like you have that tendency to like perform for people? I I feel like, yeah, Um honestly I feel like since COVID like I just haven't I haven't had the circumstance where I'm meeting like a whole group of people that are new at the Mm -hmm. same time yeah like that just doesn't happen as much um but I definitely like I definitely do do still do that sometimes and I totally understand what you're saying I feel like there is like a part of me that's always like I need to make sure the person I'm with is always having fun or like uh-huh. always enjoying my presence where it's like my mm. family I'm like I don't care <laughs> like they're gonna like me regardless like I don't care <laughs> they all hate me regardless <laughs> they all hate me I regardless. do what I do <laughs> um but yeah so like that feels like less need to be performative Mm -hmm. but also there are moments where I do that for my family I'm like hee hee ha look at me Mm -hmm. um again it's probably a like a plea for attention Mm -hmm. do you find yourself having that same conflict like you don't quite know which one is like the real Becca oh yeah sometimes I say things and I'm like who was that? Who said Who that? that? It's been a journey, though. I feel like I have become more authentic because. Mm, yeah. And I've like really start. I don't know, though. In a way, though, I know nothing about myself. <laughs> That's like, the fuck of it all. <laughs> yeah. No. When Taylor Swift said, how can a person know everything at 18 and nothing at 22? She was so she came so correct for that because that right? like. I feel like I used to know myself like to a T like I knew how to act in every situation. That's the sort of thing. I knew my, like what behaviors I thought you should do mm-hmm. in every situation that I could think of. Now yeah. things are so much more in a gray area. Uh-huh. Like sometimes I don't know what to do. Oh uh, yeah. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I don't know what to do. And that's so feels so weird to like need to, be given advice or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah I also think it's um the kind of stage of life we both find ourselves in Mm -hmm. um because I think you have this I think like or at least I had this like kind of thing in the back of my head growing up where it's like okay I'll you know as somebody like an upper middle class person in America um I was like oh I'll like go to school and then I'll go to college and then after college I'll like know what I want to do and then I'll just do that for the rest of my life Mm -hmm. until I die um and that was just like okay everybody like that was you know what everybody said was going to happen and so now that we are on the other side of that um it's not (laughs) as Mm -hmm um and dry (laughs) oh yeah not at all not at all and so I think but it's something I find like everybody who I know our age is like struggling with because it's like oh fuck (laughs) what What even do we do (laughs) yeah yeah you're on your own kid like (laughs) you always knew it (laughs) yeah exactly um and so I think I yeah and I think that's that con and I think that I think this age because like I think that's why I think that's why Taylor Swift may she, it. may she yeah she like she wrote she doesn't do anything by mistake you know no because it's like that's Those the age where you start real like you start realizing things um yeah Lord yeah. also has a great lyric um I used to think I was a genius but now I'm 22 mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so true yeah like I need all of these tattooed on my back I know <laughs> uh. oh my god but yeah um mm-hmm. yeah and the whole yeah being authentic is also I I find this podcast to be an exercise in authenticity <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um, just be saying things I know um okay my next question is mm-hmm. and I'm gonna preface this because like as somebody who's done a lot of work 
like as somebody who's studied a lot of stuff about like the AIDS crisis in particular Mm -hmm. and also some other like depiction of like chronic illness and stuff in like yeah um art like do you ever find that like your diabetes like affects how you make art or like the kind of art you want to make or like Mm. like do you have that kind of relationship to it in your life who that's a pretty good question um well I don't know if I do really have like an artistic relationship with it yet Mm -hmm. because it kind of still did happen so recently oh yeah like five years ago it's still um, a new thing in your life, like relatively. Yeah. So I think I'm still honestly like in the first stage of grief with it, to be mm. honest, or maybe second. I forget how, what the stages are. Uh-huh. Um, I think I probably will have like some artistic relationship with it because, you know, that's who I who I am. Um. <laughs> But yeah, it's a little too fresh. I mean, it does affect like I'm sure subconsciously it has in some way because it has affected like every aspect of my life in some way. Um, But not like a conscious where I'm like, oh, this definitely is coming from Mm -hmm. this thing, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think with time. But yeah, I'm still like still grappling with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Mm-hmm. must be it especially especially like the story like like just knowing just knowing the story of like how it came up and everything like yeah I, I can imagine it being a like you know I can imagine being a thing you're still trying to navigate a little bit definitely it was um, very Gabby Hanna whoa yeah because like the other um <laughs> <laughs> the other like kind of I was um I was really I was like good friends with somebody who had who was type one in high school as well but she Mm -hmm. had like she had known since she was like five or something yeah so it's like I could see how it's a completely different experience because then it's like basically always been a part of your life yeah when I was diagnosed I remember this nurse telling me because she also had type one she was like before you know it you're not even gonna remember what life was like without it but like I lived 17 years like I lived so much I lived so much more of my life without it than with yeah like it's gonna be a long time before you like like, oh (laughs) that evens out (laughs) it's gonna be a long time before you can say oh I've had diabetes most of my life yeah exactly so (laughs) <laughs> until that day comes yeah it's very new still yeah that's so that's so interesting because I never even like thought of it that way for you yeah you know yeah it's just you know Nick Jonas disease so it's <laughs> all she is to me <laughs> yeah so I find it interesting though like that stages of grief comment you made about it so like hmm do you want to describe that anymore or like oh yeah sure I mean I do fully forget what the stages are (laughs) first one denial I don't know if I went through that um (laughs) but there is I I mean (laughs) (laughs) I don't I don't um (laughs) yeah I could not deny it um I mean it's truly when I first was diagnosed it was truly one of those things where like I can't even describe how my brain felt at first Mm -hmm. like it was like you're like truly like your whole view of everything Uh changes in like a day yeah like that's crazy so that itself took like a year to recover from and like the normal and then there's like this weird I don't know there's like a weird thing with it where it's like oh man this really is gonna last forever Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have to deal with that and I feel like that's what I still deal with is like the fact that like until the end of time I will be 
injecting myself with insulin. Mm-hmm. And like, I will never, there's, hey, the grind, no days off. <laughs> there truly is no days <laughs> off with diabetes. Like you do have to give yourself insulin no matter what. Uh-huh. And it's crazy. And it does, I mean, I can live very normally. I'm very lucky. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also like a, a fear of like, what if I can't, pay for stuff sometimes Mm. or what if um i i don't know what if i want to go on a trip and then like something happens where i like lose something and i can't travel then or i can't like really live i can't like study abroad how would i get my insulin like stuff like that Uh um where it's like i don't know i'm still figuring out like how to live normally sometimes Mm yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and it must also be challenging with having type one specifically because there's like nothing you can really do about it in the same way that like you know type type two sometimes comes about as like a lifestyle thing and like even then there are certain like some people can like kind of like cure themselves from my understanding like yeah type two is reversible yeah reversible yeah but like like you you can get rid of it i can see it being a little i can see that being like screwy for you yeah Um, (laughs) yeah because definitely annoying it's not it's not in the same way for you um yeah exactly and so it's just something that happened that you have to deal with (laughs) you know yep yeah um for sure but again it's very nice that like even though it can feel isolating sometimes it's nice to know that like there is a lot of people still even though only three percent of the world's diabetics are type one that's still a lot of people yeah so it's good to know you small but mighty Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the silent majority (laughs) uh Three percent, the silent majority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, my final question. Okay. Will be, so like, right now, in this moment, mm-hmm. not like in this moment, but like you know, you in this moment answering this question, what do you like actually like see yourself like doing with like the rest of your life? Not even like you know. Maybe I meant like artistically when I met, when I asked the question, but mm-hmm. or like probably even like I meant like job kind of, but like I don't know. It's something I'm trying to do, like detach people's worth from what they do to make money um in my mm-hmm. own life. Mm-hmm. Um or like, mm-hmm. you know, detach like their like main thing from what they do to make money. Um yeah. And then it's like, you know, but like what do you see yourself doing? What are like the types of things that you like really want to do? as of like right now great question I really do want to like work on be a part of like film and tv stuff Mm -hmm. um I do love acting still and would love to also do that but I think also like having more creative control of project is also of interest to me like Mm -hmm like I said, directing and writing. Um, And I think I, I don't know. I love shopping. (laughs) I want to go to there (laughs) and I want to shop. (laughs) No, I sometimes think about like, do you ever think about being a personal shopper? Of course. I think, we would both, I, I think we would both kill it at that job. I would slay it, but... Um, like, if other people just gave me their money to buy them things, like... I would do good. And that's kind of the thing, because I'm like, I'm sure there are more steps than actually just, like, doing that, but, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, but, like, when I see Maybe. things, I'm like... Especially because I just, like, have an appreciation. I don't know, like, tell me if you relate to this, but, like, I have just, like, an appreciation, like... Especially when it comes to, like, clothing or, like, furniture, like things Mm -hmm. that are a little bit more artful um yeah 
I like I just have an appreciation for them even if they're like not my taste or like not my size or like you know if I'm looking through like clothing and like I, I'm not seeing stuff my size but I still like enjoy looking at it because I just like I just like seeing it you know yeah uh, and so sometimes I I'm like that. I wish I had somebody like dress up in this <laughs> <laughs> literally like I, I want to put this to use even if it's mm. not for me um I th- I've been like searching myself lately and I truly do feel like creating curating particular aesthetics is my favorite thing and Uh either if i'm doing that in through a performance through costume design or through like directing or some type of other design that's what i'm obsessed with or if i'm even making a pinterest board or listening to music or making music (laughs) it's what i love my little graphic designs i love it Mm -hmm. it is one of those things where like you can if you distill what you do down to like its greatest form like I've had the same thing where like I think my my favorite thing to do is like tell stories yeah like that's why I think that's why I enjoy like and that's why I want to like do what I want to do ultimately Mm -hmm. is because I enjoy like I enjoy storytelling Storytelling. yeah it's like a concept um yeah and that's that's just like another way to like distill it down to like it's like simplest form like what is this yeah you know what is it that you truly enjoy about this thing yeah um that's interesting that's like a different way to look at it yeah um I also want to write a poetry book Uh, and also I feel an overwhelming need to be a drag king on the side sometime (gasps) Oh my god! <laughs> like I just think it would be You'd so be fun. So good at that, actually. Thank you. Do you know what my name would be? Yeah, I think hard. It's gonna be so. Hard. It's gonna be so smart. No, it's actually not. Oh. It's just based on my last name. Herbert. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, Harry Ho. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank Hell. you. I feel like I would be like a 70s guy, like a disco guy. A, a, the best era, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Thank for you. men. Guys, we were on to something. We were on to something <laughs> in the 70s. <laughs> we, need to, we need to run that back. <laughs> Literally. We need to run the run tapes away. back. Some things need to stay in the past, some things need to come back. <laughs> porn stash i'm cool in it i can't believe that was not in our ends list for fall winter (laughs) can i i'm gonna i don't even know if this is gonna stay in the episode but i just need to tell you in this moment while i'm thinking about it yeah say it i had like it it's probably where my mustache thing like started i had such a crush on porn stash from orange new black really i thought he was you know? so hot like i like i had to physically set because like obviously the character is terrible um yeah. famously famously like a terrible not, <laughs> the even, not the worst person on the show though um somehow somehow, somehow not somehow not the worst person on the show um but but i i just remember like everybody was like oh the stat and i was like i really like the stash <laughs> actually like that I think that was the first time I realized that like did something for me. He wasn't. <laughs> Whoa, guys! The year of realizing things. <laughs> Literally, I feel like Henry Henry Cavill recently had a mustache, and I was like, that made me think things about him. Not, not think <laughs> things are true, but think things like, whoa, <laughs> not. <laughs> Why did my hand look so wide? <laughs> Why is she so wide for? <laughs> Now, Henry Weird. Cavill, do you ever like come at, Henry Cavill is one of those people where you're like, how is somebody that attractive? <laughs> like, how is somebody that like it's spooky? Or like do you remember when Demi was after him? No. Oh, like um You can tell me anything about Demi Lovato and I will leave it though. <laughs> De- it was like Demi, like Demi followed Henry or Henry followed Demi on Instagram, and then two minutes later um demi posted like a really sexy selfie and everyone was like not a coincidence 
<laughs> oh my god i i can't hate yeah. on her no but that's the other thing have you read it on twitter have you ever been on like twitter or instagram and you just come across like the most gorgeous person you've ever seen just like randomly it, and it, it's infuriating is that yeah it's like how what must it be like to grow up that beautiful <laughs> yeah and then i go on hinge and i see and it's the most cretinous <laughs> scary <laughs> fucking imbeciles i've ever seen in my life oh my god <laughs> did Hinge i come up with the word <laughs> cretinous <laughs> yeah it's not a word it's a good one it's a good one um <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, hinge. Oh definitely my god, definitely not a word. That was definitely a scary time in my life when I had a hinge. Um, but yeah. Okay, Becca. Well, that's that's my interview for you. Thank you for sharing. Oh god, well, th- well, thank you for asking me those things. Got a little deep at some point. Yeah, but our attempt at earnesty. <laughs> I'm just coming. So that's definitely now. not a word. That's my new prank. <laughs> that's my new prank. <laughs> my new bit. <laughs> New bit, guys. New bit just dropped. Watch the space. And now an MPJ special announcement. Hello, my little jump scares. It's Quinn. So, Beck and I didn't explain this in the episode, but this is actually a two-part episode, so be sure to tune in next week for when Becca interviews me. Guys, I'm scared. Oh my god! Did you say Lizzo? Yeah, I'm staring at her. Per. You know yeah. what song I heard? Who? To Be what? Loved. To Be Loved. Which I think is the best to song be off her new loved. album. I'm like, I heard that in an Italian cafe and I was like, they even got Lizzo oh, over sigh. here. Damn. <laughs> it's, um, hitting. it's hitting. Wow. Well, um, that's yeah. nice. That's pretty nice. It's so nice. Anyway, so guys time for our friggin weekly segments and so of course guys you can you had come through we've been begging begging on our knees praying to the dogs about how we need more emails and one of you actually did your due diligence your duty no. to us and delivered a hero, a hero yes. among people local um, hero local yes. hero caitlin um so yeah we did receive an email and quinn if you would do us the pleasure of reading the email, it is uh, honestly get your tissues out. If you thought we were earnest before this, this was like so moving. I can't even describe it. No, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. From Caitlin. Uh, from Caitlin. I'll say, because I don't know if we should do full name, yeah, but yeah. from Caitlin. <laughs> you know who you are, Caitlin, because you wrote the yeah. damn email. <laughs> Subject icons. Ooh, ooh. Hello, sleigh bosses. After your desperate pleas, I just wanted to write in and discuss how absolutely iconic y'all are and how integral you are to my personality. At this point, at this point, <laughs> you are the prophets of the modern day. You speak the word of people, of the people. And isn't that so true? Because like you are up there with Julia Fox. Addison oh, yeah. Ray and oh, yeah. Malia Obama when it comes to <laughs> serving. <laughs> Five stars on Yelp, perfect service. And in the same way that Taylor Swift is my parasocial philosopher, you what? are on the board of directors <laughs> serving philosopher in a way that John Flop Lock never could dream of. <laughs> so true. Anyways, that's all I had to say. And I hope you continue to slay your days. Live, laugh, loving life. Caitlin. Also, the Mr. Bananas episode was so good. I can't. Caitlin, wow. Caitlin. Caitlin. Hey, queen. <laughs> hey, queen. Done, done it again. again. Constantly raising the bar for the rest <laughs> bar of us. Bar Doing it flawlessly. <laughs> I would say I'm surprised, but I know who you are, Caitlin. <laughs> but I know who you are. <laughs> Caitlin, I can't even begin to describe basically how incredible that email was and how much of it i agree with which is 100 percent, 100 i would honestly venture to say a thousand percent i agree with this email mm. yeah. and thank you yeah 
you know and it is it is it, like for as much as becca and i bully you guys like it is nice to hear stuff like that <laughs> they, they just know this isn't all going into the void and like people are actually like enjoying this product we're putting out um oh it's fabulous yeah because like oh my god when we got this email i was like giddy i was like <laughs> i was like <laughs> exactly like little freaking kids like, wagging our like, feet i was like this is so fun like my mom's like why are you smiling at your phone i'm like i got i got an email on the mpj account <laughs> and so i'm the opposite of pissed if you think i'm talking to someone no i got an email on my <laughs> podcast account <right? laughs> yeah but seriously um caitlin thank you so much and you are officially a manic pixie you are yes. not being a jump scare right you're now. You're not being like, a jump scare. Is, you never could. That be, is actually. so no. Yeah, and so you're on Santa's good list um, mm-hmm. by default, I believe now. Yeah. <sighs> we love it. Now it comes time for the jump scare of the week, and the jump scare of the week is just a time in Becca's lives where we were. <laughs> <laughs> what, did I... Why did you say? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you said it <laughs> shoot shoot i'm laughing so hard you said a time in becca's lives <laughs> did i say my and becca's lives no you definitely just said a time in becca's lives i swear 6 30 in the but... morning i don't know how to contend with that no i know anyway I know. anyway i could <laughs> but be it's wrong a... obviously I it's hear time in the wrong. week where becca and i are just going woo, woo. um <sighs> And so, Becca, what was that moment for you this week? Okay. So, I just talk about my period, obviously. Oh. And um, an unfortunate uh, occurrence or cause or actually rather effect of the period was that I did, for the first time at this job, cry at work. Oh. Yeah. um, It did have to happen. It was one of those last straw moments when when this woman wouldn't give me her phone number. I had to call it. I had to I had to watch the back and I had to wipe a tear from my face. (laughs) Why wouldn't she give you her phone number? Because, quote, she doesn't shop there. Girl, what are you doing (laughs) right now? (laughs) Was it to like set up like a benefits thing or was it to like. It's the loyalty account, which is how Mm. you if. I don't because then she's going to come back in a week and complain that her product is broken and she needs her money back. Guess what, babe? You can't do that without giving me your phone number when you bought it. Ooh. Ooh. Um, yeah, oh, so pissed. that had hurt it. <laughs> oh, I was pissed. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was very terrible. And then it, w- it was just normally that would not upset me like it did, but I was already stressed. I had mm-hmm. terrible cramps. I was really just feeling it at that moment. And then, so then when I walked to the back and I was like, had a single tear, you know, when you're crying and then someone's like, are you okay? And then you're like, "Ah!" and it really just makes it so much worse. No, so yeah. Someone just offered me a pistachio and I lost it. (laughs) Was it in like, was it because like they were like, because I've had it both where it's like they were being so caring in the moment to like ask you how you are. And then also like, I cannot believe this person is asking me how I am right now that they have the audacity. Because I'm like, I just want to kill some, like I could rip somebody apart right now. <laughs> oh no, it's usually because it's like it just the how nice they're being. But mm. n- no one even asked me if I was okay. She literally offered me a pistachio. <laughs> but it was that same effect where I, it, it caused me to absolutely weep. And I was like, oh, now I have to take my 15 minute break right now, actually, because I cannot go back out there. Really, like, I can't go on the floor like this. <laughs> I cannot be seen, actually. Oh my um, God. And I don't know if you've ever, you have seen me cry, I guess. Yeah. But my, it, it shows in my eyes for hours that mm. I just cried. Yeah. So that look was just like on my face for the rest of the day and i'm a sensitive person i'm not like embarrassed to cry but it's like ugh, I'm no i love see all these people i love again. when people cry i really admire really? it because i feel like i i don't cry and i feel like I, I want to so badly no i mean i do view my sensitivity as a strength 
Mm -hmm. but um i don't know sometimes like crying in public is just not the most comfortable place to cry again Mm -hmm. because once i start (sighs) crying i don't want to stop doing things in public though can be liberating like doing things you're not supposed to do in public can be so liberating if i was like outside with strangers sobbing sure Mm -hmm. in the back at work (laughs) <laughs> with smelly trash yeah anyway what were you gonna say i started napping in public our senior year of college i do recall i would just be in a public space and i would close my eyes for like 20 minutes <laughs> i love that and I would who fl- says you can i would fl- <laughs> <laughs> just be so we're studying <laughs> <laughs> oh my this god is how, this is how like i was burning the candle at both ends i would literally nap in public like i'd be like i need to close my eyes for a good 20 minutes yeah w- what if you were like dreaming and you like kicked someone <laughs> i usually wouldn't let myself go like fully to sleep like if i like felt myself fully going mm. to sleep i'd like realize and be like i can't fully fall asleep like and then Ugh. i'd be like, <laughs> like you know i do one of those i do one of those <laughs> yeah so. the jumps yeah. it's so funny watching people do that in class <laughs> like jump awake uh-huh. uh i love it yeah so that was my jump scare um mm-hmm. Quinn, what was your jump scare this week? My jump scare is one that is annual, and I'm realizing okay. and hearkening back to last week's topic. Mm-hmm. Guys, we got to get more creative with the Halloween costumes. Oh. Mm-hmm. We have we have to be more creative. Yeah. It actually, it's it's one of the reasons Halloween can't be my favorite holiday, because there it, there is a way to fuck it up. Like, I hear you. You know, like if you're you. just like, there is something kind of camp and postmodern about buying a spirit Halloween like costume for like the name alone. But like, mm-hmm. guys, just like, we just need to be more like, because here's my thing. Yeah. Like, even at like my Cyrus plastic hearts, like that was a costume I did that was mostly my own clothing. Mm-hmm. that like minimal like minimal inner like i bought like minimal stuff for it right but i still think i kind of fucking turns it mm-hmm. and there's a way to do that but we need to be a little bit more creative like you just can't like i just remember looking at my instagram feed and just feeling utterly uninspired the like, only there was person nothing... who just does it is heidi klum to be honest Oh my god, Heidi Klum every year consistently excellent when it comes to Halloween. She's a genius. She's no, a the genius. worm. Guys. And I love, girl. can I say, I love that she's so secure being like a beautiful, gorgeous person mm-hmm. that she'll just do something like that. No, yeah. No, on Halloween, she's always no like willing to like be something else, which I like. But the Heidi Klum is like the effort. Like, I know we all don't have the means. Yeah. But. Oh like God. that's the kind I know of you were all are poor this is what I want to say <laughs> like, that, like the like, worm that's what yeah. I like the worm Heidi Klum that should be everybody's guiding like that should be everybody's cool. star like <laughs> yeah cutting light like how can I be as creative as possible because I just uh, do it like oh my god and then with the sexy costumes guys because I think Halloween I think the thing with Halloween is it gives people allowance to just like do things that they wouldn't do in their regular lives And it's just like, first of all, the power, it's like what RuPaul says about drag, the power you have on Halloween, you can access in your everyday life. You're just not allowing yourself to. Oh, yes. And so like, I hate when people are like, oh, I'm like, I'm going to be like sexy for Halloween. And they're just wearing like a corset and like a bra. Yeah. Snooze fast. If you're going to be sexy. Every Saturday night. If you're going to be sexy. Like, go fucking sexy. Like, yeah. Like, like, just do it. Like, just do it. Mm -hmm. You know who also had a great costume? Julia Fox, when she was dressed as like the fifth element thing. I did not see what she did. Actually, I'm I'm already shocked. Her and her, well, she did um when she took Valentino trick-or-treating. Um, they did like a where the wild things are group costume. I saw that. That was Slay. And then she was also in like a fifth element kind of thing at some other point during the weekend. Um, oh, oh. <gasps> the orange. Ooh. Yeah. 
Lovely. But guys, we just need we just we all just need to be more creative. We all just need to be more creative when it comes to our Halloween costumes. Also, way too many people dress up as cops. What are we doing? I've thought this for so many years now. What are we doing? What are we doing dressing being up a, as cops? Being a prisoner and being a cop. <laughs> as a group costume, guys. you're fucked up if you do something like that. <laughs> no, literally. You're fucked up. Stop. Also, like stop. Also, also, by no means, by no means, should you be dressing up as a cop and then going to a queer space? Are you fucking uh, dumb? Like, are you fucking like, dumb? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Do you not? Like, literally, any public area, to be honest, also, any, like, just, yeah, any, like, where you could encounter should, someone else. <laughs> yeah. Any member of a marginalized community who policing has, like, adversely impact. So, all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah but, but, like, especially with the history of, like, the gay liberation movement and, like, queer rights, Stonewall, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like you've got to be like the reason you can the reason you can maybe get married one day and like live your like heterosexual fantasy life mm-hmm. um even though you'll still be gay at the end of it is because <laughs> we were throwing pennies and bricks or whatever at cops who were trying to like bust all these people and like people decide they had enough like mm-hmm. oh my god the ancestors were rolling in their graves seeing literally people walk into gay bars dressed as cops like oh i cannot imagine the utter That's lack scary. of like self-awareness of respect it's uh i found it uh i found it abhorrent i saw somebody uh I, I find it abhorrent makes my skin crawl anyway yeah that is that, actually that was, the scariest thing you could do on halloween that was my jump scare yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. and yeah uh uh anyway <laughs> boo think about how mad i got about that first <laughs> find it abhorrent literally just, it's yeah. true no it's true, you, no, it's true. Said, are you fucking dumb <laughs> <laughs> anyway and, and now we get to the manic pixie nothing. moment of our weeks yeah. where we're just like you know the main characters are mm-hmm. um i'm just you know really living in like a fantasy yeah it's just a moment where you felt like the main character of life um not even of our lives individually but just of life in general of existence really yeah um and so becca what was that moment for you this week so at work i there's really quite nothing as refreshing sometimes as just seeing an old friend oh. and it's like oh, oh true. my god like no reason why really like you kind of just don't talk as often anymore and then it's like oh my god you this person who i just still care for you it's so great to see you and then i don't know like i just want to run into more old friends yeah. i'm like hey that's my old friend uh, and then yeah. you make plans to like hang out soon and you will follow through because you actually want to mm-hmm. like how lovely yeah it's just so comforting i can't really describe it more no uh, no friendship is such a beautiful thing as i'm growing older i'm mm-hmm. truly realizing and friendship mm-hmm. different friends can be different like can serve different purposes in your life it's so true like i don't have to have a podcast with all my friends no, me and you, transactional. <laughs> Strictly. Yeah. Okay. You guys yeah, should see Becca and I, I before can't. this. We're like rolling our eyes. We're like, <laughs> like you so again. Like, you, this, uh, I gotta do this shit again. <laughs> again? Um, no. Like, we joke. Yeah. We kid. Yeah. Um, but like, no. it's nice because you, like, you don't have to like, I feel like at one point in my life, I was like, oh, I only want to spend my time investing in close friendships. And now mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, having a casual friendship. It's great. It's sweet. It's orgasmic even. Like I, um, <laughs> I, uh, cause it, <laughs> like, uh, at, um, like I remember last year, like all my, like all my friends would like want to do things, like my different friend groups would all want to do things at the same time. So I'm just like, 
oh god now i gotta <laughs> think about how i'm friends. gonna spend yeah too, literally too <laughs> many friends like the exact opposite problem i had like <laughs> like mere months before but i was like oh my god but it's nice that like you know not everybody has to be like your good judy who you're texting every day you know yeah. and it would be exhausting well, if that was the case but you know you can just right. have certain people who are just you know you see once a month once a year yeah and it's really perfect when you're on the same page about that Ugh. it gets a little bit ooh, when you're not like yeah. if someone wants to hang out all the time but yeah it's so true friendship mm -hmm. and all its different kinds so lovely um but yeah so that was basically my manic pixie moment of the week Quinn, literally, what was yours? I guess this just has to be it. But I know we talked about Midnight's last week. Mm -hmm. But I really connected with it this week, I felt. Like, I got the album more this week. And because okay. um, I sent back on my ranking. Um, mm -hmm. And I just had a moment with the song You're On Your Own, Kid. Because we were doing, like, this, we were doing, like, this tour through some mm -hmm. towns along like the Amalfi coast and I was just like listening to Midnight's and I was mm -hmm. like oh and like the song you're on your own kid I was listening to it and like I've I've loved the bridge since the first time I listened to the song but the like just crazy this but like this time I really like listened to the verses and then all connected for me. And I just got like so overwhelmed with like emotion. And I was in like the back Ugh. of like the van driving through the Italian like countryside. And I like almost started to like, I definitely started to tear up a little bit, but I almost started to like fully cry. Um, because I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is such a beautiful song. <laughs> Taylor. But it's like, ugh. But she's just, ugh. ugh. Music so, can so easily make me cry. Like, no, I love every time yeah. I want to cry, I just listen to Anne Hathaway sing Le Miserable. <laughs> I'm not. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's almost more funny that you were earnest about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's no, so I'm so crazy. serious. That's so, crazy. I'm so serious. <laughs> I'm so serious. Oh, That's like the last. That's like the last. I was expecting you to say, I was. That's like expected. Like I would have expected, like <laughs> anything before that. Like <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like, oh, Her, like, the four minutes she sings, dreamed a dream in time gone by. Oh, like, I dreamed that's a something dream about that song. Oh, I dreamed a dream is a great song. Like I love that song. Yeah, probably my favorite song from Les Mis. Yeah. Oh, Patty Lapone's version. I'll never be over that. I remember listening to Miss Anne do it. Lee Michelle. Lee Michelle. <laughs> She didn't sing I Dreamed a Dream. Oh, wait, no, she did. Yeah, with, with a, her mother. Adina Menzel. With, with yeah, Adina. her mommy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Glee. Uh, let's talk about Broadway covers on Glee. Maybe this time on Glee. Might be the definitive maybe this mm. time. Anyway. But yeah, you're on your own, kid. Mm -hmm. I, just find it, I just find it to be a beautiful thing. She's so smart. Like, she's so... <clears throat> But it's just again, She's it's that, a genius. It's it's like it's an expanded version of that. How can a person know everything at eighteen but nothing at twenty two? Because it's about mm -hmm. it's about what we talked about a little bit <sighs> during the interviews. But like, um, it's just about like thinking your life was going to be something and then having it be different and then like looking back and being like, so why was I so like why was I so like focus and why didn't I let myself enjoy things more when she said so make the friendship bracelets take the moment and taste it <sighs> Ooh, Taylor you hear the sounds of my screams yes. the scream I scrumped oh yeah also from sprinklers <laughs> from sprinkler splashes to fireplace ashes what anyway she's crazy we are those people lock who are like, her up Lock, lock her, her up. up. Lock her up. <laughs> lock her up at the Eras tour. <laughs> Literally get her. We know <gasps> where she'll be. Oh my god, how do you feel about Phoebe being on tour with her? That's gonna be such a big night for you. <clears throat> Whew. Um yeah, I'm gonna have to sneak into the concert. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about for a while now. I've had this like really like suspicious 
not suspicious. I've had this lurking feeling like I need to bring my cousin to a concert, pretend that he, I don't know, somehow get him a ticket or something and pretend to be his sign language interpreter and stay with me now. It's okay because it's my walk cousin. Walk with me, walk with me, walk, <laughs> walk with me. me. Walk with me. <laughs> and since I'm, uh, hopefully there will be no other deaf people there. That would be uh, so unfortunate because I don't want to have to be there. No other deaf have people at the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> <laughs> deaf people don't come <laughs> and let me tell you why i will disappoint you because what i'm going to be trying to do is not interpreting i'm going to be trying to become a backup dancer learn the choreo actually and sneak in there real suspiciously and that was uh, run over to phoebe <laughs> <laughs> but um i'll give phoebe a kiss on the cheek and then write Taylor a letter, a good night letter. <laughs> that sounds like a threat. It's not. Moon is another one of those supporting acts, but I know. They're in like weird parts of the country. I don't want to go to Cleveland. Um, <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> but yeah, that's our damn show for this week. Um, Becca, mm-hmm. if you want to look at what you're doing how can they do that <laughs> they can follow me on instagram at becca hobart <laughs> uh twitter and spotify bex gloss and they can also follow me on tiktok at where y'all go in during world war three and quinn ha- oh wait they can also find me probably like out farming or something like that milking the cows and the goats quinn okay. where can the people keep up with you individually I need to say you sound exactly like, do you know those gay guys on TikTok who like go to fast food restaurants and like talk about their orders? My name's Jackson. And for <laughs> you the sound exactly I got... like him. You <laughs> Thank sound you. Exactly like... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Dakota and Jackson. No, I sometimes the things they say. Oh my God. Anyway. It's crazy. Those guys say the darndest things. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Quinn P. Murphy and on Twitter at Quinn P. Murphy underscore. Mm. you can also find me um and so becca where can people follow the show (laughs) if they're so inclined fuck (laughs) Fuck. um they can definitely follow manic pixie jump scare on instagram tiktok and Please email in. Oh, also follow our YouTube channel. We post the podcast at length and also some exclusive content over there. And for the table, we got jalapeno poppers. <laughs> and for my drink, I chose the chocolate chocolate milkshake. And then please email in at manicpixiejumpscare <laughs> at gmail.com. Yeah, we guys. will kill you if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a threat. <laughs> And that was guys, Caitlin did such a good job. Caitlin, also, I don't oh, know yeah. what episode we read Kylie's letter, but like if you need another example, mm-hmm. see, we've 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 done two great examples. Kylie wrote in with something about the culture. Yeah. That she wanted our input on. And now Caitlin has written something genuflecting to us. And we'll accept both of those actually. Yeah. The only thing well, we don't accept is criticism. But I don't if know. You why do you have do that. that. So, I don't know if there's anything to criticize, but like, <laughs> and so that just leads us to believe you're being a hater. Yeah. <laughs> but... And that's back in nice job. Anyway. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> we're quit. <laughs> we're quit. <laughs> and and we're, back we're back on. And, and thank, thank you. you. Or listening. Very operatic, isn't it? Yeah, if I could access my voice. But that's what happens when you wake up at 3 a.m. Manic Pixie Jump Scare is hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Executive produced by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Sound and video editing by Quinn Murphy. Social media management and highlights by Becca Hobart. And our theme song was written by Quinn Murphy, Becca Hobart, and Nandita Mahesh.